So if you're, you're a potential tenant and you're looking to take some uh, new commercial space, um, you will most likely be dealing with a commercial property agent. But you need to remember that the commercial property agent is representing the landlord and not you. And therefore you need to be aware of the sort of main terms that um, a landlord is going to try and obtain from you. I mean, the leasehold system in this country is quite complex and has evolved over centuries and tends to be rather weighted in favour of landlords, which makes it all the more important that you try and understand you know, a few of the important terms. But essentially a lease is just a contract between a landlord and a tenant, and like most contracts it is negotiable, so you should feel free to um, negotiate. But we would always be very happy if somebody uh, if a potential tenant comes to us first to say, look, these are the terms on offer, uh, is there anything you can do to help us improve on those terms? And uh, if we're brought in at, at the outset, then there's usually more we can do than if you come, say, to a, a solicitor after you've already agreed terms in principle, which can make it harder to try and sort of unravel what's been agreed. Uh, sort of important terms that you'd be looking for would be firstly the length of the lease. Now with commercial leases that can vary between short term leases one or two years right up to say 20 or even 25 years. What, what uh, length of term will suit your business really depends on the circumstances of your case. So if for example you're setting up a shop or a restaurant where the location is very important and you're looking for footfall, then you'll probably want to negotiate a much longer term. Um, if, however, the location of your business is not that important, it's, a, it's, it's an office or a service industry, then, uh, or possibly a, a new business, then you want to consider opting for a shorter term. But what you can do is perhaps try and negotiate a short term with an option to um, renew the lease or go for a slightly longer term but with a break clause in that so that after say three years or five years you have the option if you're the tenant to uh, break the lease. Um, the rent is obviously an important consideration too. Most um, landlords will try and hold out for the uh, for a full market rent, and they like to try and keep in there a, a what they call a, a high headline rent. So obviously you'll try and negotiate um, the rent down if you can, and it's important to know rental values in the area. <clears throat> but uh, what you can also consider doing is negotiating, say, a rent-free period. So if, for example, you're going to have to move into the premises and do some fitting out, or let's say the premises are not in pristine condition and you're going to have to redecorate, then you know, don't be afraid to, to say, well, it's going to cost me money to move in here. I want you know, a decent rent-free period, maybe three months or six months rent-free, all of which will help. Um, consider also, importantly, the rent review pattern if you're a tenant, you should try and hold out for five yearly rent reviews, whereas some landlords might push for, say, three or four yearly rent reviews. Again, you know, try and negotiate on that. Another important area with leases is repairing um, obligations. Leases are often sort of sold as being full repairing, insuring leases. Actually, a full repairing lease can be a very dangerous thing because you, you go into the premises, uh, if you sign up for a full repairing lease, if those premises are not in good repair even at the beginning of the lease, you can be required at any time to put and keep those premises into good repair. And the cost of that can sometimes be very considerable and more considerable than the rent. Therefore, consider negotiating a limit on your repairing liability. For example, you will, uh, you will agree to take uh, repairs um, as they uh, take the premises in no worse condition than they are at the commencement of the lease. 
if you're only going to be responsible for internal repairs, but you're going to be charged a service charge because the landlord will charge you for external or structural repairs, again, consider putting a cap on those repairs um, because you really don't want to be paying for structural matters which really should be the responsibility of the landlord. So those are you know, some important terms. There's obviously plenty of other terms that may appear in a set of heads of terms that a landlord's agent might try and put together. So again, always better to try and consult us early on and we hopefully can help you with that negotiation. <laughs>